get it. 79 was for this, the Molly McGee speaking. Hi, Molly, it's Dennis. Huh? It's Dennis, Dennis Daly. I would have loved to have been on your show years ago, but the best I can do is kind of go back through history and play your shows this year. You you understand how that works, don't you? Oh, sure, I realize how those things happen. Okay, then, Molly, I better get this program put together. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Goodbye. Who do you say it was, Molly? Anybody we know? Dennis, a uh, decent sort of a chap. Generous and a good neighbor. It was one of the longest-running and best-loved shows in the history of radio. Throughout the 1930s, then through the war years, and into the 50s, Jim and Marion Jordan, as Fibber, McGee, and Molly, brought a little bit of Mid-America into our living rooms every week. Their radio home at 79 Westville Vista was visited by an array of zany characters and lovable guests. Their jokes and running gags, including Fibber's famous overpacked hall closet, Dennis Daly looks at the evolution of this historic radio series in a salute to Fibber McGee and Mark. Hi and hello again, everybody. And during this series, we're looking at one of the most successful radio shows of all time. If you have never heard an episode of Fibber McGee and Molly before, you have a real treat. For decades, the show made us laugh, brought us through World War II and much of the Depression, and on into the 50s and 60s. Now sit back and enjoy two episodes of Fibber McGee and Molly. Let's go back now to the next of the last day of 1935. That first year when Fibber McGee and Molly was on the air on NBC, they were trying to find an audience, but more than that, they were trying to find themselves. And along for the ride from day one, good old Harlow Wilcox. The Johnson Wax Program. Good evening, everybody. Johnson's Wax negotiates a neat and nifty New Year narrative with nutty nip-ups and some notable novelty numbers by Rico Martelli's orchestra, Emery Darcy, and those celebrated and celebrating self-starting citizens, Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> While we're on our way to 79 Wistful Vista, Martelli and his men issue a syncopated admonition. Old lady, be good. Wrap it up, Rico. have beautiful polished floors in a few minutes' time if you use Johnson's Glow Coat, the remarkable liquid polish that requires no rubbing or buffing. as old Fibber and Molly are getting all set for a big evening. Here's Molly in her purple velvet and Fibber in his tuxedo. Well, in part of his tuxedo. Hey, Molly. Say, if you don't quit bothering me, McGee, New Year's Eve will be over before we get any place. Molly, did you put them little dinguses into the hutches? Talk then. Oh, shucks, you know, them, them, them studs into my shirt. Did you put them? No, but I will. 
But I don't know about that stiff shirt, McGee. Huh? But I took it out of the box. Five moths flew out of it. <laughs> no, don't worry about them, Molly. We'll be back before they can starve. <laughs> McGee, what's this newspaper doing on the floor? Huh? Oh, that's the newspaper I had my tuxedo wrapped up in, Molly. My, my. <clears throat> Look at the headlines. Dewey captures Manila. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly days, McGee. Are you going to wear them shoes? Them yellow ones? Huh? What's the matter with them? They're comfortable. I'll have them under the table all evening. Nobody will see them. Oh, yeah? You don't know who'll be under the table before the night's oh. over. <laughs> you don't wear yellow shoes with a tuxedo, McGee. Who says so? Shucks, I think they look kind of snappy. I got them shined up purpose, too. But you should uh, have patent leather ones, McGee. Patent leather? <laughs> no, sir. I'm no gigolo. <laughs> Next thing you want me to carry a rose into my teeth. <laughs> Let me... Oh, hello there, Sil. Come on in. Give me a hand. Yeah. I done check the furnace like you say, boss. she be okay till y'all get back. I hope. <laughs> well, I hope so, too. Put the studs in McGee's shirt there, silly. What? Stick the studs in the shirt, Sil. Yeah, sir. Where is it? In the little box there. Now, if you two will... Are... McGee. Huh? What's the matter, Molly? Look at them pants. They got more wrinkles than Rockefellers. Oh, <laughs> They'll be okay after I wear them a while. <laughs> anyway, they look kind of like them little pleats that all the fellers is wearing. Wrinkles is wrinkles, McGee. Now listen. The iron is all attached in the kitchen and board is up. Let Silly go and press them pants. Yes, ma'am. I can do that. All right. No, no, no. You stay here and get that shirt fixed, Sil. Yes. And say, you ain't putting the right studs in the right holes. You got the cuff button in the front and the collar button. Here, watch me. You hold the shirt like this here, see? Take the stud in the right hand like this. Stick the point in the buttonhole. Press down. <coughs> Dead dreaded. <coughs> well, anyway, that's the way you do it. I did it, boss. Take a little shirt like this. Take a little stud in here. That's it. Push down and rip a little hole like this. <laughs> Dead dreaded still tearing the shirt ain't part of it. <laughs> For heaven's sake, go do your pressing, McGee. I'll show Silly how to fix the shirt if there's anything left of it. Okay, okay, but I'll make a valley out of that boy yet. Hey, Sil. What? When I lift my foot, yank the pants off. Yes, sir. Now, easy now. Where do y'all get them little old shorts, boys? They show you funny. My favorite color is look, red and green. Yes, sir. Yes. I think they're kind of nice myself. Yes. Oh, here. Is the iron hot, Molly? Well, it should be, McGee. I just got through with okay, it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Probably cold. Ouch! Nope. It's okay. Let's see. Left leg first for luck. Oh, don't never worry about the wrinkles in your pants, because anyway you figure they're better than ants with a hoop skinny wow and a high there, babe. <laughs> oh, now who knows? Okay. Shucks. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. We don't want no magazine. Oh, <laughs> hello there, Geraldine. Oh, excuse me, Mr. McGee. Well. <laughs> I just ran over to return this book to Mrs. McGee. Well. <laughs> it's instructions for knitting. You know, knit one pearl, too. Uh. <laughs> I told Gerald you need all your whips to do it right, and he says, yes, knit whips. Knit whips. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that just too, too perfectly fantastic? I mean, isn't it really? Uh, yeah, but my... I told Gerald I was going to knit him a sweater, and he said he was just yarning for one. Yarning for one. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that repulsive? I mean, uh, isn't it really? Yeah. Oh, Gerald says it's whips of things, Mr. McGee. I mean, he does really... Yeah, but if you don't mind, Geraldine... Well, you go right on with your pressing, Mr. McGee. I don't mind a bit, really. Oh, yeah. I'm always telling Gerald to try and iron his own trousers, but he says no, he doesn't want to set a precedent. <laughs> isn't that just too, too convulsive? I mean, yeah, is it really? Kind but of. don't let me interrupt you, Mr. McGee. Well, I see you pressing your tuxedo trousers. Yeah. I bet you're going out to a brawl. Well... <laughs> well, I simply can't get Gerald to go out. Well, he says the party's either too dry and the humor's all wet, or the party's all wet and the humor is too dry. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. He says the only reason men wear wings are so their soaps can see what's being poured into them. <laughs> yeah, says so the only yeah, thing we get geared up is to pour them down. <laughs> Isn't that just the gas Yeah, but if you... Well, I'll just put this book on the table here, Mrs. Oh, McGee. Oh, oh, you thank think... Mrs. McGee for Yeah, me. I'll do that. Now, don't you spill any bacon and eggs on your soup and fish? No. <laughs> well, I guess we must go now. Well, I'm well, sorry. Well, that's one time I caught you with your pants on the ironing board. <laughs> Who was talking to you, McGee? Geraldine, why? Why? 
You mean you stood there and talked to a lady in your bare shorts? My bare... Oh, but oh, why, Chuck, my, I never thought of that. I need a... Oh, sure. You think she noticed? <laughs> think she noticed? Huh? Well, do you know what's most 10.30, McGee? We'll celebrate no New Year's tonight unless you get a move on. Silly? Silly? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Did you finish putting the studs in the shirt? Yes, ma'am. I- is this right here, ma'am? Let's see. Chuck, that's right, Phil. You... Hey, look at that shirt. Silly, did you wash your hands after fixing the furnace? I was just going to, ma'am, and you said to put a stud, no shirt, ma'am. Heavenly day. Look at it. Looks like Exhibit A at the fingerprint bureau. (laughs) Well, it's the only one you got, McGee, and you'll have to wear it. Here. Stick your arms through it. Okay. You finished pressing my pants, Phil. Yes, sir. There you are, McGee. Here's your collar. That collar? Oh, shucks, Molly. I'm going to wear a soft collar. You will do nothing of the kind. It ain't done, McGee. Oh, now, don't give me that stuff, Molly. I know what's did. Why, when I was in Baltimore, that's before I was married, you know what they called me? Is it fit for a lady's ear? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, sir. Broadcloth McGee, they called me in them days. Broadcloth McGee, the big shot Bo Brummel of the Baltimore Bachelors. Oh, my. All right, shucks, I might... Hold still, Bo Brummel. That, that is Molly. That, that, that's too tight. I can't even breathe. <laughs> oh, there goes the button. <laughs> Pick it up, McGee. Okay. You would have to roll away under the stove. <laughs> For heaven's sake. There you went and ripped the shirt some more. Now look at it. <laughs> Lift in three places, the buttonhole tore, silly fingerprints all over it, and the collar button lost. Well, thank heaven the pants are all right, at least. No, ma'am. <laughs> ah, what's that, silly? I said no, ma'am. That flat iron burned a little old hole right through him. <laughs> You really save yourself hours of work when you start using Johnson's Glow Coat on your floors and linoleum. In the first place, this remarkable liquid polish is easily applied with a soft cloth or the long-handled Glow Coat applier. You don't have to do any rubbing or buffing, for Glow Coat shines as it dries without help from you. Once your linoleum is protected with a gleaming polish, you can keep it clean with a dry floor duster instead of a scrub brush. Dust can be whisked right off the shining Glow Coat surface. Soil spots are easily wiped away. Avoid sticky, cheap polishes that become smeary and collect dust. Johnson's Glow Coat sheds dust and dirt and gives a longer-wearing polish. And here are the Mary McGee's leaving the house for their big evening. Gee, did you lock the door good? Yep. Say, lift your coat tail if you like. See if a cat shows. Oh, what's the use? You can't see it without me lifting the tail of the coat. Who's going to go around lifting up my coat tail all night? Oh. Well, hurry up and get in the car, McGee. Okay. It's close to 11 o'clock now. Where are you going, Sylvia? Home, please, ma'am. Oh, no, you don't, Sylvia. you got a chauffeur. Come on. Get her started while we get these here paper hats on. How does this look, Molly? Terrific, McGee. <laughs> Where's mine? Here you are. <laughs> Heavenly days will freeze in a McGee, but who cares? Yeah, who cares? Happy New Year! Happy New Year, silly! Yes, ma'am, I guess so. <laughs> Come on, Molly, get in. Are you ready, Phil? Yes. Okay. To the Wistful Vista nightclub, boy. Get going, silly. Yes, sir, here go. Oh. Mm-hmm. Battery date, boy. What say, Phil? <laughs> I said, that little old battery date, boss. Oh, oh dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear. But here comes the little tax cab, boss. Maybe he'd give us a poop. Oh, hey, 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 mister. Hey, cabbie. Yoo-hoo, mister taxi cab man. Will you give us a push to get started? He's going to do it, boss. Hi there, brother. Happy New Year. Uh, will you give us a push with the taxi cab? Sure, but this is a waxy cab, a Johnson's waxy cab. Oh. And you can place this in those paper hats, friends. Protect that car finish of yours from snow, sleet, and cold weather with a hard coat of Johnson's Auto Wax. Why, it's so easy to apply, you can do the job yourself. Or you can have it done at your garage or waxing station. Now, don't forget, Johnson's Cleaner and Johnson's Auto Wax. What are you doing running that taxi cab, Harpo? <laughs> Isn't it expensive to run such a big car, Mr. Wilcox? You used to drive a little one, didn't you? Sure, but being a Johnson salesman, I found I could save up to one-third with a large-size can. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> For you and me, my dear, 
Sing here to romance. And now back to the McGee's. They're off whooping it up toward the Wistful Vista nightclub, where they plan to see the old year out and the new year in. Listen. Step on it, Phil. Whoopee! Yoo-hoo! Officer, happy new year! Horse fellas. You hear that, McGee? Oh, shucks. He done give you the wrong answer, ma'am. He should have said the same to you, ma'am. Shucks, we ain't got the right response yet tonight. Bunch of dad ratted sour pusses, if you ask me. <laughs> Oh, a happy new year there, neighbor. Did you see the dirty look, McGee? Oh, shucks, what do we care? I'm going to enjoy this evening if it kills me. Whoopee! Hail, hail the gang's all here. What the... Oh, good evening, ma'am. Happy new year, ma'am. Happy new year to you, ma'am. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> the dad right of town's gone Republican. Come on, silly, step on. Well, at least they'll have the right uh, spirits at the nightclub. Here we is, ma'am, right here. Okay. Gotta get them brakes fixed. <laughs> Come on, Tilly, we ain't got much time left. You go somewhere and wait for us, Tilly. No, ma'am, I, I'm waiting in the club, yeah, ma'am. What's that, Phil? I say I'm waiting in this little club. What you mean you're waiting in this club? Waiting table, ma'am. Oh, waiting table in the nightclub here, are you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Chuck, why didn't you say so, Phil? I didn't know it myself till I read it in this little old radio script, boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, McGee, leave the car here. Are you sure it won't freeze up? Yep, it can't. There ain't no water in it. <laughs> My, it's a real quiet evening for New Year's Eve, McGee. Sure, but you just wait till 12 o'clock comes and watch things bust loose, Molly. Now, well, here we are. Check your hats and coats, sir. Uh, want to wanna check your coat, Molly? No, I'll take the wrap as usual. <laughs> good evening, sir. I'm the head waiter. Oh, Happy New Year, bud. Thank you. Are we too late to get a good table? Oh, no, I believe I can place you nicely. Walk this way, please. Oh, I can't, bud. I ain't bow-legged like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dear, you're so funny. <laughs> my, it's real quiet in here, considering. Yes, madam, we run a very orderly club. Hey, your voice is kind of familiar, bud. You know a fellow by the name of Harpo Wilcox? Why, you mean the famous Harlow Wilcox? Yeah, that's right. The one who's always talking about Johnson's glow coat, the no rubbing, no buffing floor polish that shines as it dries in 20 minutes. That's the fellow. The one who talks about the attractive yellow can with the red stripe and the name Johnson's glow coat. That's him? Sorry, madam, I don't know him. Oh. <laughs> well, here you are, here you are. I think you'll like this table. You can see the floor show very well from here. That's fine. That's using the old head, waiter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> Not even the Johnson salesman left. <laughs> Say, where is everybody? Uh, everybody, sir. That's what I say. You ain't got much time left to fill up the place. Oh, there will be latecomers all evening, sir. Oh. Uh, do you wish to retain the paper hat? Madam and sir. Why, oh, shucks, why not, bud? What's the celebration without getting dressed up for it? Send the waiter over here, will you? Uh, certainly, right away. Uh, waiter, table number 12. Let me take that horn, McGee. Okay. I'll wake this bunch up. Ah! Whoopee! Happy New Year! Look at them, McGee. Just a bunch of dead pans. Oh. <laughs> They'll liven up, Molly. I always say it's all for the waiter, boss. Oh, hello there, Phil. <laughs> you wake table here often? Yes, yeah, sir. How much you get? McGee, it's none of your business. No. You got some good champagne, Phil? Yes, sir. Twenty-year-old boss. Oh, no, sir. None of that. We get fresh stuff or we don't order. <laughs> yeah, but boss, if you can... Never mind the salesmanship, Phil. Don't pull that on me. Shucks. When it comes to wines, I knows my apples. Just the wine sap. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Well, Phil, bring us some fresh champagne and a hamburger piece. Oh. Now, 
Not for me, McGee. I'll have a... Well, let's see now. What'll I have? Uh, you're looking at the wrong side, Molly. The prices is over there. <laughs> Quiet, McGee. Silly. Yes, ma'am. Bring me a bowl of, uh, consami. Yes, ma'am. The uh, head of a lettuce and Thousand Islands. <laughs> French fried potatoes and celery and radishes and olives. A Philly Mignon and a nice steak. <laughs> What you going to have, McGee? Look like he's going to have a fit, ma'am. <laughs> you sure you want to want all that, that stuff, Molly? Why, sure, I'm sure. We're celebrating New Year's Eve, ain't we? Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> Give me one membership into a club sandwich, sir. <laughs> club sandwich, yes. Uh, that all, boss? Yes, uh, I ain't as hungry as I was. <laughs> my, my, I wish the orchestra'd play. I'd like to dance. Me too, Molly. Chucks, I used to be quite a dancer in my day. Mm. Used to run a dancing school over in Orain, Ohio. Had classes in tap, acrobatic, ballet, soft shoes, and old-fashioned waltz. <laughs> Chucks, some of them fat old gals learning ballet give me quite a laugh. <laughs> ballet laughs, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll never forget the time I teamed up with Pasco de Mosco with a challenge buck and wing act playing the orchestra. Him time. There's a gust, son. <laughs> we was playing the beat you in Scranton one week when... Say, is that that cigarette, gal? I believe I want a cigar to celebrate with. Hey, hey there, sis. Yeah, wish for something, sir. Yeah, I want a mild panatella hey, that was... Uh, aren't you the girl that was in the check room? Yeah, I am. A double a check room gal and cigarette gal. <laughs> Checks ought to make you wait on table and sing with the orchestra, too. Well, maybe you think I couldn't do it. I used to be in vaudeville. Is that so? Well, no, isn't that nice? I wonder if you ever met up with my ex, sis. I had me a monkey ex then. <laughs> what do you mean, then? <laughs> Marvelous Mongolian monkeys they was billed as, sis. Clean entertainment for the whole family. I'm sorry. I don't believe I ever knew them. <laughs> what did you do on the stage, Jimmy? Oh, me? Oh, I had one of them double voice acts, you know. High voice and low voice. You did, huh? Mm. Well, let's hear it, sis. Sure, do it once, sis. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Look, I can use my high voice like this to tell you all about my check room service and these cigars and cigarettes, see? Or... I can use this voice to tell you about Johnson's Loco. <laughs> if the pattern in your kitchen linoleum looks faded and dull, yet you feel you can't afford a new floor covering, you'll be glad to know that Johnson's Glow Coat will make that linoleum shine like new in a few minutes' time. Why, just spread a little of this remarkable liquid polish lightly over the floor, let it dry for 20 minutes, and see the transformation. A shining polish, easy to keep clean. Your best guarantee of satisfaction is the fact that Glow Coat is the product of the famous Johnson's Wax Laboratories. And then I can go back to this voice to tell you that you can save up to one-third by buying glow coat in the large size can, see? Simple, isn't it? My, my, it was wonderful. It's great stuff, sis. Oh, I'd have swore I'd heard that second voice someplace before. Yeah, um, probably while you were monkeying around in vaudeville. Well... I'll be seeing you later, I hope. <laughs> you know, Molly, I still think there was something funny about that. Oh, forget it, McGee. What time is it? Oh, it's just exactly 11 minutes to 12, Molly. <laughs> Watch these folks bust loose when the bells start ringing. Oh, look, McGee, the band's going to play. What does the sign say? It says, Rico Marcelli and his top hat tornadoes playing I Found a Dream. <laughs> About one minute. Oh, and here's Phil with the grub. Uh, file him anywhere, Phil. Yes, yeah, sir. Grub sandwich here, boss. Say they meet me in over there. Coffee, cream, you got butter. Was there anything else, boss? No, I guess that's all for now, Philly. But after things bust loose, you can bring that there champagne. And it won't be all. Hey, look, Molly. What? Look, 12 o'clock. Happy.
I'll give him an Irish dig. Okay, up you go, my ass. Hey, look out, Molly. You're going to step in the butter. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What's going on? What are you people doing? Help me up, McGee. Okay, Molly. Happy New Year, Mr. Tower. Happy New Year. Listen here, I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave. We can't have this disturbance. Respectable nightclub. Where's your New Year spirit, you Lugan? Well, what's the matter with everybody here, bud? Don't New Year's mean nothing to him? I will when it gets here. What do you mean when it gets here? It's 12 o'clock, ain't yeah. it? Yeah, but you're a day early. What? what? Yes, this is Monday night. New Year's Eve is tomorrow night. <laughs> And so, until next Monday night at this same hour, when it will be the new year, may we wish you health and prosperity in 1936. May your future gleam like a coat of Johnson's Glow. By the way, you save one-third on the large size Cayenne. This is Wilcox, folks. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Rico Marcelli's songwriting contest ends at midnight on Wednesday, January 1st. Owing to a large number of entries, it may be several weeks before the judges are able to select the winner. The winner will receive a $100 cash prize from S.C. Johnson & Son, and the winning song will be published with full royalty rights by Irving Berlin Incorporated and will be featured by Rico Marcelli on one of the future Fibber McGee broadcasts. <laughs> You're listening to another in Dennis Daly's series of salutes to one of the best-loved shows in the history of American radio, Fibber McGee and Molly. Now again, here's Dennis. Fibber McGee and Molly from the next to the last day of 1935, the first year they were in business. They had gotten off the road, stopped in Wistful Vista, won a house, and the show was settling down. But it's still a little rough to listen to because it's not the Fibber McGee and Molly we eventually came to know and love. Let me show you how much difference a year and a half can make. Let's go from the last show of 1935 to a show from June of 1937. Let's skip over 1936. See if the characters don't sound more familiar. The texture of the music... Fibber has calmed down. He doesn't have that evil laugh anymore. And it's a more normal Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with I Love Louisa. <laughs> talking with a man who had just had the floor his house completely refinished. In fact, he had just paid the bill. This time, we're going to take care of our floors, he told me. We're taking your advice about protecting them with Johnson's Wax. Well, that's advice I give very freely on this program, and you're all welcome to accept it and save yourself expensive refinishing charges. It's really remarkable how much punishment floors will stand when they're given an occasional coat of genuine Johnson's Wax. Besides the money-saving protection, Johnson's Wax offers two other major advantages. First, the glowing beauty it gives to all floors, furniture, and woodwork. And second, the way it saves you work all during the year. Be sure, however, that you get the original and genuine Johnson's Wax, available in paste, liquid, or cream wax form. time comes, a husband does one of two things. One, he goes away someplace. Two, he hangs around and gets in the way. The guy living at 79 Whistle Vista is type number two, as you'll see when we join Fur McGee and Molly. Now, McGee, 
if you're not going to be any more help than this, I wish to take the afternoon off. Go to a movie or something. I might call Billy Mills and go bowling. Well, why don't you? I can't. Billy hates bowling. <laughs> well, why don't you get down to the cigar store? You and the other hangers on down there haven't set the world situation for a long time. Ah, uh, those mugs what it's all about. They're too fast to fight and too wise to know anything and too dumb to catch on when I try to explain things to them. <laughs> you being the authority, I suppose. Why not? I read the papers who study military tactics. All them zips do is stand around moaning about their tires. <laughs> Say, this tire shortage is certainly going to put the country back on its feet again. <laughs> I don't care. I like to walk. Remember last summer, Molly, when I was planning to pack a lunch and get up early on some Sunday morning and take a long hike out into the country? Well, I remember you planning it, but you never went. <laughs> well, I hate to go away and miss reading the Sunday paper. Well, you could have taken the Sunday paper with you. Oh, yeah? You know, a guy that carried a Sunday paper two miles once, he's been bow-legged ever since. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, if you're not going to help me with this house thing, I wish you'd drop someplace. Okay. Uh... Now, listen. Hold your hair first. I just did. What you parted with, a corkscrew? <laughs> I'm just different than most good-looking guys, Molly. Instead of curly hair and a straight part, I got straight hair and a curly part. <laughs> no kidding, Molly, I don't... Oh. Think... What's the matter? Hurt your hand? Oh. Molly! What's the matter? McGee, my ring. Huh? Gone. Gone? Oh, my God. Hey, maybe you took it off to wash your hands. I never take it. Oh, dear. My beautiful engagement thing. It'll break my heart if I lose that now. Well, where did you see it last? Right here on my left hand. Oh, dear, if I only... No, I mean, where were you? I had it this morning, and I haven't been out of the house. Now, let me see. First, I have the fire here in the fireplace. Well, maybe you dropped it in the fireplace. Oh, heavenly days. Scrape the ashes all out and stick them, McGee. I look upstairs, and then you get the vacuum cleaner, and we... Oh, dear. Come in. Oh, hello, Miss Uppington. How do you do, my dear? Hello, Mr. McGee. Hi, Eppie. Now, watch where you plant those big... I mean, uh, watch where you step, Eppie. We lost a diamond ring around here someplace. My engagement ring, Abigail. Missing. Oh, how terrible I hear. And it was such a dainty little diamond, too. <laughs> well, I tell you, it isn't the ring so much as it is the sentiment, Abigail. I remember the night McGee gave it to me, just like it was yesterday. There he was, healing in front of them. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Uppy ain't interested in how... Oh, but I am, Mr. Dee. Oh, it's simply too, too romantic. <laughs> Tell me, my dear, after he put the ring on your finger, did he kiss your hand? Oh, sure. <laughs> I think he was going to, Abigail, but before he had a chance, my father came in with a glass of elderberry wine for each of us. Said, congratulations, children. Our <laughs> grand old man, too, your father. Must have waited outside that door for two hours and never spilled a drop. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you were married away, my dear. I never did even long engagement. Neither did McGee. Particularly after we went into vaudeville. <laughs> you know, we never proceeded her more than three days. <laughs> oh, but when were you in the theater? Oh, quite you. Oh, utterly fascinating. <laughs> Uh, this is an excellent mission. Oh, Wuffy, I remember you. Didn't you used to have an iron jaw act uh, swinging on a rope uh, by your teeth and waving a little American flag? <laughs> now, please, Mr. McGee, I was never in Bowdoin. I played only Shakespearean roles. Juliet, you know. Oh, we played Joliet, too. <laughs> Joliet, and then we went to Kankakee and Decatur. No, 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 no. Not Joliet. Juliet, my dear. Oh, oh. oh what fun. My eating man fell in love with me. <laughs> oh, poor dear, Steve Jarvis. Steve Jarvis? Yes. Yes, his name was John T. Jarvis. But I always called him T. Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> well, whatever happened to old... I mean, uh, what the... Well, uh, I don't think he knows the update. Oh. But the... <laughs> to make his fortune, oh. but I've never seen him since. Well, didn't he leave any message when he left out again? Yes. Yes, he left a note saying that someday he would return. And when he did, he... Oh, good heaven. I wonder. You wonder what? He said that some night he would return and pop a table at my window. Oh, my. Oh. Yes, of course. Oh, but it couldn't. But still, I... Oh, my honest, have this investigated at work. back and threw a rock through her window, that lets out me. It lets me out of more than that. What do you mean? I mean this diamond ring of yours. I've been afraid. I mean, I am afraid. Uh, maybe I walked in my sleep again. Uh, are you sure you had it on this morning? Yes, I am. Well, that's a load off my mind. 
I was afraid I'd got up in the night, swiped your rock, and heaved it through somebody's window. Well, come on, let's get the ashes. Get the vacuum cleaner, Molly. We'll get this house going over like it never has. Here, take my coat.
no, no, no. Get down. Stop jumping up on me. Down, donkey. Down. Oh! He bit me in the leg. Let me out of here. Well, aren't you going down hypnotizing? Oh, you come out of it, Dorothy. I don't want to hear it. Get away from me. Get you too. Boy, I sure fooled him, didn't I, Molly? <laughs> you fooled me, too. I was about to call the drunk store for some flea powder. <laughs> well, I had to get rid of that guy some way so I could get back to work. Some act, huh? It was wonderful. It was so realistic. I... McGee, pull in your tongue and stop that panty. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm tired. Carpet sweeper worked awful hard. Well, use the vacuum. Okay, put in the cord, will you? All right. Thanks. What's the matter now? Motor won't start. McGee, have you been thinking of it? Why should I tinker with the vacuum cleaner motor? I don't know, but have you? That's a silly question to think that I... McGee, have you? Oh, you mean with the vacuum cleaner motor. <laughs> yeah, come to think of it, I have. I took it apart to fix it. Well, couldn't you get her back together again, right? Ordinarily I could, but I took it apart on my workbench down in the basement, and I already had Fawn more apart, and I didn't know which part went back in which. Well, well, I'm glad you didn't have my sewing machine down there, too. I did. <laughs> I kept the parts of that separate. Well, good for you. Yeah. I didn't want them to get mixed up with the works out of your electric mixer. What? Please, McGee, will you stop experimenting with the appliances? Well, I was just trying to... Something is all. I thought if I fit a couple of little paddles to the mixing machine, I could use it for an outboard motor next summer. And my sewing machine? What were you trying to make out of that? A pencil sharpener? No, I... Hey, I bet you got something there. Uh, I bet if I attached a razor blade... No, to no, no. No, no, please. Go get the carpet sweeper and sweep these rugs. Don't forget, I have a diamond ring laying around here somewhere. Don't worry, I'll find it. I'm the guy... Hello, River. Hello, Molly. What's cooking, good look? I've lost my diamond ring, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah, be careful where you step, Harlow. We like mashed carrots, but not in the rug. <laughs> my hot <heart> tonight. <laughs> well, gee, that's tough, Molly. Are you sure you lost it around here? Yeah, absolutely. I always wear it right here on the third finger of my left hand. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see. Now, what good will it do to look at her hand? You're just hanging around the fairgrounds after the balloon's gone up. <laughs> Hey, look at that hand. What's the matter with it? Nothing. It's lovely. Why, it's hands like yours that make the best possible advertising for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Oh, my. And glow coat is a beauty treatment for your linoleum, too. Oh, I have 20-minute floor facial. Four out little glow coat spread it around and presto. In 20 minutes or less, it sparkles with pride and joy. Hello, <laughs> you amaze me. <laughs> How so, Joe? <laughs> the way you keep up your enthusiasm... For seven years now and more, you've been whooping and hollering about Johnson's local. Don't you ever let down? What do you mean, let down? After only seven years, do you realize how many hundreds of years, B.G.? B.G.? Before Gloco. Oh. How many hundreds of weary years women spent trying to keep their homes clean and bright with bunches of grass and crude brooms and dirty scrub brushes, the aches and pains and... Oh, you wouldn't understand. Well, I hope you find your diamond, Molly. Thanks, <laughs> He certainly loves his work, doesn't he, Diddy? Yeah, you know what he did? He went down to the Red Cross yesterday and gave him a pint of glow coat. <laughs> Told him it was his life blood. Oh. Well, this ain't finding that diamond, Molly. Move that chair, will you, so I can sweep on All right. Ain't none of that any place. Yeah. You know what I can't understand is how that ring ever come off your finger. I thought it was on so tight. Well, it was, but whenever I worry, I lose weight. Well, what are you worrying about? Well, wouldn't you worry if you lost the diamond ring? Yeah, I guess I would at that. Oh, well, I'm going to keep playing. All right, fine. Hello there, kids. Just stopped in to say goodbye. Why, Mr. Oldtimer? Where are you going? Joining the Navy, daughter. I'm an old salt, full of the old pepper. Eight barrels and all swell. What? Believe the wheel and the life boy and look out. Hey, up the back side on the hip cutting. <laughs> sailing, sailing over the balmy main. Many a show her me when she hey, 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 hey. Wait a minute, old timer. See? They won't take you in the Navy. You're too old. You'd lay an awful egg in a crow's nest. Yes, that's so. Well, by John Paul Jones, Johnny, I've got my mind made up to join the Navy, and I'm going to do it. I told the girl, oh. I says, chicken, I says, <laughs> get off my arm and make way for an eagle. I but now look, Mr. Oldtimer, you're way, way over the age limit. You can't get in if they won't take you. Then I'll stow away, daughter. I'll send you a snapshot of me on a destroyer. You ever get seasick, Oldtimer? Oh, good gravy, Johnny. 
Why did you have to mention that? <laughs> oh, that spoils everything. And I know I'd look cute in a sailor suit, too. I bet you would, too. <laughs> Indeed you would. It's the navy blue that makes sailors like you. And it's sailors like you that make the navy blue. <laughs> Always right. Do you think so, Mr. Hill? Absolutely. 
Nature gives them a little almost instinct for that kind of stuff like that, they say. Mm-hmm. That's how the robins know where to fly down to where it's warm. Mm-hmm. How the bears know when to go to sleep for the winter. Mm-hmm. How the little moths. Mm-hmm. How the moths know when to start munching on your best baby. <laughs> I guess you never thought of that before, did you, sis? Yeah, I have a bit, sis. Oh, you have, huh? Yes, mm-hmm. but I always kind of laughed it off, mister. Huh? Because anybody with the brain of a bumblebee knows that a groundhog is just a stupid little quad who said that wouldn't know February 2nd from National Apple Week. And really, a proper source for intelligent meteorological forecasting. So long, long cat. <laughs> Little work. One of these days, I'm going to lose my patience and play clap hands. Here comes Fibber on the back of her offer. <laughs> now, let me see. I better put that piano back where I got it. Oh. Boy, am I wore to another. I got more creeps in the cricket and more pains in the greenhouse. My back is so. See, I'm almost ready to give up. Hmm. And you know, it just breaks my heart. I, well, for goodness sake, how nice everything looks. Here. Boy, it ought to look nice. I've lost seven pounds in weight. Two inches in height and a lot of inches. Well, now you just sit down and rest, dearie. You've really worked hard today, and I appreciate it. Yeah, what good does it do? With your ring still missing? Well, I'll be. Look! What's that? What's what? What are you staring at? Your hand. Hey, your finger. Your ring, there it is. Why, you must be seeing things. My hand is as bad. No, 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 no. Your right hand. You got your ring on the other hand. <laughs> well, for. Oh. Oh, McGee, thank you, darling. Thank you for finding me. <laughs> what do you mean, finding it? You had it all the time? I find that's the worst. Now I remember. I put it on the other hand this morning to remind me of something. Remind you of what? Never mind. It seems so silly. Huh. Well, I want to know. I got a right to know. And I can keep from collapsing just long enough for you to tell me. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. <laughs> well, why did you put the ring on the other hand? It was to remind me to ask you to help me with the house cleaning today. In bad weather, when the butcher maker and the candlestick maker come covering across your kitchen floor with wet and soft feet, your linoleum needs extra protection. Give it that protection with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and see what a difference it makes in your daily work and in the appearance of your kitchen. As a matter of fact, it's when your floors get this extra punishment that you can see what a wonderful polished glow coat really is. It has a flexible film, which means that it wears evenly without chipping. It has a lasting luster. Gives floors sparkling beauty that brings out and preserves the fresh colors of the linoleum. And Glow Coat is economical because a little goes a long way. Glow Coat is self-polishing, needs no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. But for Glow Coat results, be sure you get the one and only Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat. Hey, Molly. You know what? I made up my mind I'm going to quit joking about not using our car so much. You know, this is a serious business. I think our support of these wartime restrictions ought to be absolutely... uh... Yeah. Good night. (laughs) Good night. The War Department has just announced new revised regulations for training aviation cadets. Under these new rules, men between 18 and 26, married or single, with or without college education, are now eligible for the Army Air Corps. More than two million more men may now join this exciting branch of the service and play an important part in America's all-out victory program. How to join? See your local Army recruiting station immediately. This is Harlow Wilcox. Unfortunately, the recording of that show has the tail end of it missing, so good night, Harlow. (laughs) No chimes, no ending, but we have most all the show. Two shows this time around, the last one of 1935 and one in early June of 1937. So you can see how much the show matured basically during the 1936 season. It would not be, though, until we get closer to 1940 that Fibber McGee and Molly would become a ratings hit and capture the imagination of America. We've got a lot of chances left to show you how that works right here. Next time around, Dennis will continue his look at what some say was the best series in the history of old-time radio. Fibber McGee and Molly, right here. Good night. Good night, all. Morrison Bridge speaking. Mm-hmm.